All right, welcome back to the OrcadX layout tutorial series. Again, my name is Adam Fuchs. I am a product engineer at Cadence Design Systems. And in this video, we're going to be doing our preliminary wiring or our first pass routing on the board that we've been working on so far. If you haven't been able to keep up or if you are just starting from this section of the tutorial, go ahead and download the how to underscore first pass routing .brd file. And then if you've been working on your board, you might have some slight differences in maybe the layout of the components. That is not a problem at all. Go ahead and continue working on that one and just use the different commands and functions that you see in this video and go ahead and work on the connectivity on your board. And again, you can jump right back over into the files that we provide at any point in time if you need to. Now, a couple things before we actually start routing on here is I just wanna adjust my visibility. We're gonna be doing most of our routing on the top and bottom layer. So all of these green sections, the silk screen, most of that is not necessary at this point. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just in the visibility section, select this all layers off. That's going to turn everything off for me right now. And then I want to turn on just my conductive layers. Let's get the top layer on there. And I also want to have my conductor keep in so that I know what is the edge of how far I can actually route my traces. Now this is good enough to just start routing as is. I just wanna show you really quickly at the bottom here, there's this really quick access toolbar where you can easily turn on and off different layers, whether it's the top, bottom, there's silk screen, silk screen top if I need to, solder mask, etc. You can also turn them all on and off with this little button right here. So with the top layer on, let's go ahead and start routing. We're mostly going to be using the add connect command as well as the slide command. Now by default, add connect is bound to the W hotkey and the slide command is bound to the S hotkey. So it's very easy to switch between the two. And you'll notice me sort of jumping around between them fairly often. I might also make some slight adjustment to some of the placement of my components. Like I can already see that this one right here is 100 degrees rotated in the wrong direction. So I'm just going to go into the move command. Let's turn on my silk screen top so I can see which component I'm working with. And let's go ahead and rotate that. So for add connect, let's start over here. There's two basic modes, manual mode and assisted route mode. In manual mode, I can basically start wiring from, well, let's make sure that our filters are correct. I'm gonna turn on just my traces, pins, and vias, as those are the only objects that I actually want to route from. But as I was saying, while in manual route mode, I can basically start routing from any pin, any wire, any trace, any via, and it's not gonna get in the way of me completing that trace. For example, I can place it right there, I can place it right there, and back. And you'll notice that what it does is it just drops DRCs to let me know that, hey, I violated one of my design rules. As I'm you know, hovering a trace over a section, you'll notice that the trace also turns white and the mouse turns into a bow tie, indicating that, hey, this will cause a DRC. Now, as I start adding a bunch of these vertices, I don't have to restart my wiring at any point. I can just hit the backspace hotkey and it's gonna remove one vertex at a time until I get back to my original starting location. So let's go ahead and complete that connection. In assisted mode, if I were to start routing from, let's say this pin right here, it's gonna actually either hug or shove around a pin or via or whatever else it might find in the way and then allow you to continue wiring in order to avoid DRCs. So let's go ahead and click that in there, done. Now. Both the manual and assisted mode have something called clearance view. If I get close to one of these pins, for example, this one here, the N42648 net, and I start wiring from here, you'll notice these little bumpers start to appear around the different pins. Now these bumpers are generated from the constraints that we set up. And this is basically our six mil or 0.15 millimeter spacing that we set up for a trace to a pin. 
And again, if I switch to assisted mode, you'll notice that all of the hugging happening around the pin or other copper feature is in line with that clearance view. So again, we can complete our routing. For the trace widths, you'll notice that this one was thicker by default. My trace width right now is set to auto. You can also set it to constraint or neck. And when it's in auto, it's basically just always going to try to use the constraint value if it can, or use a thinner value if it needs to. One other thing I want to mention is that while in neck mode, if I switch over to this VBAT, for example, you'll notice that the trace is thinner. But if we go too far, I believe the constraint was five millimeters, you'll see that we start to get a DRC saying that, hey, our neck length is longer than the five millimeters that we allow for. If you make a trace that you want to get rid of, you can either just control Z to undo the last action, or you can, let's do a redo. Or you can go back to the select mode, select the trace and click the delete button on your keyboard. Okay, one more cool thing I wanna show about the routing. Let's route from here, for example. This pin needs to connect to this one over here. Maybe there's some other you know, copper features in the way or other components in the way. And I don't know exactly how I want to get to this pin. What I can actually do is maybe route partially of the way there, then hit control T on my keyboard and start routing from the target and then meet somewhere halfway. So that is one way that you can also handle maybe long routes. So something that has to go all the way from, you know, this pin over here to this pin over here. But that's something that usually I would do later down the line in my routing process. One thing I can see here already is that if I were to route this trace to here, routing this pin to this pin is going to be pretty difficult. So what I'm going to take advantage of is something called the swap command. It's under the move command. So you have to right click on here and then if you go down, there's a swap command. If you have pin swap enabled, you can do that diff pairs, but I want to use the component swap. Let's turn on components in my selection. And then I basically just want to swap R9 and R10. So the first part is R10, and I'm just left clicking on these. The second part is R9, and you see there that they swapped without any issues. Switch back to the move command on there. Use the auto mode for my trace width. So now when I start routing these, I have no issues with getting them connected. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and just route some of these other ones. I'm going to switch to my bottom layer here. So this is probably a good time to also talk about the working layer mode. Working layer mode is basically a mode that allows you to select which layer you want to continue routing on when you drop a via. In this case, I already know that this USB interface, data plus and data minus, I want to route on the bottom layer. And then at some point over here, it's gonna to have to switch back to the top layer. While I'm in the working layer mode, I can click on this gear icon and select which layers are actually routing layers. If I need to choose a plane layer, I can also enable those. And now if I start on the bottom layer, and let's go ahead and turn off Components, make sure that we're starting from pins and traces. Yep. So if I start routing from this negative data pin, come all the way over here, and I drop a via, I can do so either by double clicking or pressing the V hotkey. It's going to ask me what layer I want to continue routing on once the via is placed there. So I'm going to go ahead and select top. So the via is placed, and now I continue routing on the top layer. Now I can't see my bottom layer because it's currently turned off. I can quickly turn it back on through this visibility pane at the bottom. And then look at that. We can complete this wiring section like that. Same thing here. Let's go ahead and start on the bottom layer right from this DP pin. And drop a via 
right here, select top, and finish our routing. Traditionally, USB interfaces use differential pairs, and there's a lot of additional constraints that you can set up for differential pairs, as well as differential pair routing. We're not gonna go over that in this video, or I think any videos in this series, as we're just doing basic routing of a basic board. This is also a very short distance at USB 2.0 speeds. So realistically, it doesn't require too much care for differential pairs and, and controlled impedances. So let's go through and wire some additional sections of the board here. I'm gonna do some of the power here. Now, for the different power traces, one thing that I like to do also is just change the color so I know that it's a power trace and maybe I can handle it as so. I can go into the visibility here and in my nets, select all of these nets and let's go ahead and set a color to something like a purple. This will just make it easier for me to recognize these as power nets. And then for the ground, I'm just going to do another color here. Let's make it an orange color. Again, this just makes it easier for me to recognize what sort of nets I'm dealing with in my design. OK, so let's connect up some of these. Also, this visibility pane, if you have your visibility set up to how you need it to be, you can actually go ahead and just hide it with this auto hide and it'll give you this tab that you can just click to enable and disable the visibility pane whenever you need to. Let's do some more routing here. Again, we're just doing rough routing to make sure everything can connect. And in the next video, we're going to be doing some second pass routing and some cleanup. Okay, here we have the first case where we actually need to take advantage of our slide command. Now here you see we have an error. If I turn on my DRCs here and hover over it, it'll say line to through via spacing. We can leave this as is for now. I tend to try to fix these sort of as they come up. Let's go ahead and switch to the slide command, either the S hotkey or slide. Again, you have a manual and assisted mode. In manual mode, I can slide this over another via and it'll just show me more DRCs. In assisted mode, again, it's going to do the hugging or shoving. So let's go ahead and slide this over here so that you can see even if I try to go over the via, it's not going to allow me to. And there we go. So while it's in the hug mode, it's going to get as close as it can to this via over here before actually trying to go around it. Now let's get back to our route command. Over here, one thing I want to talk about also is you can route multiple pins at the same time to their destination. For example, here I have five pins, which pretty symmetrically line up with these five pins over here. I can go ahead and box select these pins. And while in the route command, start routing from a single one of these pins. And you will see traces come up from all five of them at the same time attached to my mouse cursor. And if I move my mouse over one of the pins that is the target pin, then the other four will also attempt to complete the routing for that selection. 
This makes it very easy to route buses and multiple pins at the same time. Again, it can save you time or it can be helpful if you don't know exactly how much space you need for a channel of a bus or something like that, just to quickly route all of them together at the same time. And it'll space them together, especially in assisted mode, just to make sure that it doesn't violate any DRCs. Here, I might want to slide this trace a little bit just to clean that up. And then same thing, if you have two pins, which you need to have vias dropped, same thing, you can start routing them together, press V, go to the layer where you want to drop your vias, and continue your routing, and same thing. It'll just continue routing and place both of the vias for both of the traces for you. All right, let's continue doing the rest of this routing. And then once we're done, we'll add a quick ship for the bottom layer and drop vias for all of these different power traces. One other thing I want to mention really quick, if you are routing in some sort of diagonal fashion, trying to find a good example here, let's say from, from this pin to this pin over here, I'm going to drop a via really quick. And then we want to go over here, but maybe we don't want to go up and then to the right. Maybe we want to go to the right and then up. Rather than trying to finagle with the tool to try to get it to you know automatically figure that out, you can simply just press the T hotkey and it'll toggle between up and to the right to to the right and then up. This is a quick way to toggle between the two different connection paths that the tool automatically recognizes. So again, we'll drop a via and connect.
Okay, so we've done pretty much all the routing, at least at a first pass, for this board. Now, as you may have noticed towards the end of the video, I started using this unrouted nets over here just to let me know, you know, hey, what am I still missing in my routes that I need to connect up? Likewise, there is an unrouted connections. And if I click on this, you'll notice that all of these connections are these different ground stubs that I've been dropping for all my different caps, resistors, pins on ICs, etc. And we're just gonna create a simple shape on the second layer to connect all of these together. Now we're also not going to go into great depth and detail about the shape command in Orcad X layout because we're going to be using it quite extensively in the next video. So let's go ahead and drop the shape here. The shape command is accessible through this hot bar on the left side here. And you simply click the add shape. You also have an option to create voids. And then there is a shape utilities command if you need it. I'm gonna click add shape. You can choose between rectangle, circle, polygon, and then which layer you want to add it on. Again, you're not limited to just conductors. You can also add different geometries on, for example, reference layers where you might want to just add some some simple drawings but we want to put this on layer two I'm going to go ahead and turn off these layers just turn layer two on and for the net you can either select from the drop down which net you want or just use the eyedropper click on a ground net in this case and let's start drawing our shape we want this to be a polygon and just to keep it simple, I'm going to trace over the board outline here really quick. I'm using the different snapping on the edges, and we'll clean this up as we get farther down into the layout process. And then we'll use that board shape also as a reference for other shapes as well. And then just double click when you're done. There we go. So once the shape is completed, you'll notice that it, it's automatically added and connected. All of our shapes now are going to be controlled by this section over here. It's gonna tell us if there's islands in our shapes, if there's any out of date shapes that we need to refresh, it'll all be accessible through here. Likewise, notice that now we still have one unrouted net, but pretty much all of our unrouted connections have gone away except for one, which is a ground pin right here. Oh, it's this guy right here. And we can we can add this little paste this little stub. And then you'll notice that it automatically updated the shape for us. If we refresh or reset this search filter, all of our unrouted nets are zero out of 48, unrouted connections zero out of 143. And we're pretty much all set with the basic routing. So thank you for joining me in this video. I know it was a little longer. If you've been following along or if you've watched this first through and now you're going to attempt this on, on your board, good luck with that. It should be hopefully a breeze if you're able to take advantage of the different commands that we went over in this video. In the next video, what we're going to do is do some second pass routing, some cleanup, You'll notice that we have some DRCs. Maybe we need to adjust some line width somewhere. Get rid of these little short edges and whatnot. And see you then.